today I would like to show you in about 10 minutes how you can improve your iPhone photography and take better pictures with your iPhone. We will start by looking at some technical aspects and then move on to the creative part. To give the video a bit more structure I have divided it into 20 short parts or tips. The first step on the way to better iPhone photos is to hold the camera properly and like a real camera. By this I mean to stand properly and hold the iPhone with both hands and as stable as possible. This sounds trivial, but it is very important. Be aware, you want to take a good photo and not just a quick snapshot. Probably the most important decision you'll have to make when you open the camera app concerns the choice of the lens. The iPhone 12 and 13 have two lenses, an ultra-wide lens and a wide lens. The 12 Pro and 13 Pro and of course the Max also have a telephone the lens. What many people don't realize is that the focal length of the lens doesn't just result in a different framing. A different focal length also creates a different look. A wider focal length leads to more distortion. Objects in the foreground look bigger, objects in the background look smaller. This can be an advantage when you want to convey depth, for example in a landscape shot. A wide focal length also conveys more of a sense of closeness. The viewer feels as if he or she were right in the middle of the action. A longer focal length, on the other hand, tends to create a view from a distance. The viewer tends to take on the role of observer from a distance. Above all, there is much less distortion. This has great advantages for portraits. The nose, which is always in the foreground, does not appear so large. Heads and bodies are not stretched out. In most cases, you should therefore use the telephoto lens when taking portraits or generally shooting people. If your iPhone doesn't have one, at least use the standard lens. Unless you are deliberately looking for that special look of the wide-angle lens. Now pay attention to the light. For the most part, you'll take the best photos in soft light, so more likely in the morning or evening. Under the midday sun, there will be strong shadows, which is usually perceived as unpleasant or even boring. Especially for landscape shots, you should therefore consciously choose the time of day for your photos. For portraits, you usually still have the possibility to turn or position your subject so that the light comes from the right direction. Here, for example, the sun stands relatively low. Notice how the exposure of the face changes as I turn in a circle. The iPhone usually automatically adjusts exposure so that the face remains brightly exposed. Rarely, however, should you have your subject look directly at the sun. Usually when shooting people, you'll get better results with the sun in the background or slightly to the side. When shooting indoors, on the other hand, you can use the window as a large soft light source and shoot your subject standing next to the window. The ceiling lights usually produce very poor results. With a large camera, you could still use the flash to create the optimal light. With the iPhone, you can forget that. The flash is much too weak to get good results. It is best to deactivate it. Just as you should pay attention to the light, you should also pay attention to shadows. Shadows can ruin your image, but if you use them consciously and incorporate them into your composition, they can also enhance your photo. Check out these examples and how the shadow has become an important part of the composition. We'll talk about composition ideas in a moment. For now, we'll keep in mind that it's important that you look closely at where the light is coming from and what shadows are created as a result. No matter what the lighting conditions are, your iPhone will always try to set exposure optimally. This will often lead to good results. However, you might need to slightly underexpose or overexpose your image for a particular result. There are two ways to do this. You tap on your image and then drag the sun icon up a bit for a brighter exposure or down a bit for a darker exposure. If you change your framing, the correction will be cancelled. If you want to take several pictures with the same exposure correction, open the menu with the additional features by swiping slightly upwards. Now select the icon for the exposure correction. By swiping left and right, you can adjust exposure. Unlike before, however, the correction remains and you can take several different photos with the same correction. I recommend that you always at least try different exposures when you shoot and learn how to use exposure correction as a tool. Before we get into some composition ideas and rules, let's take a closer look at one of the most useful and best features of your iPhone camera, the portrait mode. The portrait mode artificially blurs the background of your photo. This way the photo looks as if it was taken with a much larger camera. Apart from the high quality look, this effect has a very important advantage. The focus of your shot is clearly set on a specific subject. Unimportant elements in the background, which would only be distracting, disappear in the blur. This is also the reason why portraits of people often look better when you use the portrait mode. Therefore my recommendation, use the portrait mode for portraits. If you are not satisfied with the effect, you can adjust or deactivate it afterwards. You do this by tapping on edit. You can adjust the effect by using the f-stop up here. If you tap on portrait, you deactivate the effect. 
and similar to portraits of people, you can also use the portrait mode with objects to get an object in focus. Objects in the background that would only be distracting disappear in the blur. The portrait mode does not always work optimally, especially with objects. Sometimes you have to move away a bit with the iPhone to activate the mode, but then you can move closer again. Ok, now we come to the really interesting part, the composition. And I was thinking that as examples of the respective tips that I'm about to show you, we could have a look at some of the winners of the iPhone Photography Awards. And if we just scroll down and look at the individual photos, even very briefly, one thing stands out relatively quickly. The compositions are almost always simple. Yes, they are original and creative, but simple. No photo contains elements that would only distract or make the photo look overloaded. And that brings us to the first important tip for a successful composition. Keep it simple. Frame the image in a way that only things that belong in the picture are visible and try to exclude everything else. One way to achieve this goal is to simply get closer. For example, look at this photo. Very simple and yet an amazing photo. Or this one. Also very interesting. Remember what we said about shadows. Again, simply details of a person were captured. Getting closer makes these photos look interesting. And the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max got a feature with the macro mode which now allows you to get much closer than before. So look out for special textures and surfaces and what you could create out of them. What's also striking about many of these photos, by the way, is that many of them tell a story. Something is happening, you're thinking about what's going on. That's not always easy to achieve, but keep that in mind for now. Another way to put a subject in focus to exclude unimportant things or just to make a picture look more interesting is to change the perspective. Shoot the photo from bottom to top or from top to bottom. This is something you should also try out again and again. For example, look at the photo of this horse. Taken directly from the front, this photo would not be nearly as interesting. From below, a subject always looks more dominant, much larger. Taken from above, on the other hand, a subject looks smaller, more reduced. You've certainly already heard the next tip for the composition of your iPhone photo. The rule of thirds. For this you should activate the grid in the settings of the camera. Now you should place your subject along the lines instead of directly in the center. It's kind of strange, but in fact it makes a photo much more interesting. For example with the photo of the jumping girl or even this abstract image of light and shadow. Besides the rule of thirds, you should also always look for leading lines. That is, look for elements in the image that lead the eye and guide in one direction. This can be a road, a river, a fence, anything that leads your eye, at best into the image. You won't find leading lines for every image, but if you manage to incorporate leading lines into your shot, it will add a lot more quality to your shot. Leading lines also add spatial depth to the image. Another way to add depth to an image is to place objects in the foreground creating a contrast between the foreground and the background. For example, here you can see the excavator in the foreground and the bridge in the background. Or here, the construction workers in the foreground, the skyline in the background. You see what spatial depth the composition creates. The difficulty here is, as mentioned earlier, not to make the composition look cluttered. Don't pack too many elements into the image. That usually doesn't work. Unfortunately, that still happens to me far too often too. And if we look at these winning photos, we notice that most of the photos were taken in the portrait orientation. That's just a typical way to hold a smartphone and it's also the format that's usually better suited for social media. Still, don't forget, sometimes the landscape orientation is the better choice. For example, for many landscape shots. Take a look at these shots for example. Don't forget that and also try taking a photo in landscape orientation again sometime. Earlier, we talked about leading lines. Another tip for successful compositions are symmetries or even diagonal balance. You'll find symmetries in several photos here. For example, look at this incredible photo with the reflection. Or this photo here. Think about what makes this photo work. Or the photo of the rows of seats. Here you see a good example of diagonal balance. The elements on the top left are in balance with the elements on the bottom right. That's how this photo works. We talked about the fact that especially when you're shooting landscapes, you should pay attention to the time of day and that the evening hours and morning hours are particularly well suited. So the time just after sunrise or just before sunset. In this context, you should try shooting silhouettes. This looks very good right away and is easy to achieve. You place your subject against the light source. Now your iPhone will expose the photo much too brightly. So you reduce the exposure as I showed you using the sun icon or the exposure compensation. And you have a nice picture of a silhouette. If you apply the tips we've discussed so far, you'll make beautiful images. 
However, an outstanding image that really impresses you can usually only be achieved with additional editing. All the pictures we've looked at today are not straight out of the iPhone, but have been edited to a greater or lesser extent. On some of them, a black and white filter was applied. All the colors were edited and also the framing was certainly corrected and optimized in post. Lately, I've been editing my photos mostly with the iPhone Photos app. You can already accomplish a lot with that. I just don't particularly like the filters. My favorite app for editing photos on the iPhone is actually Snapseed. But of course, there are quite a few other apps. And editing photos could be the subject of a video of its own. Just write to me in the comments if such a video would interest you. All these tips sound interesting and are quite valuable, but they won't help you if you don't constantly try to implement and practice them. So I'll make a suggestion. Decide to take 10 photos every day, no matter where, in the office, at home, on the way to work, Try to implement what we have discussed today and then look at your photos every evening and think about what you succeeded in doing and what you did not. If you put this last point into practice, I am sure that you will take much better photos very soon. And with that, I would like to say goodbye for today. Give me a like as feedback if the video was interesting for you. There will be more iPhone tutorials to come. So stay tuned and see you next time.